Welcome to a very special show on Trump 2.0. In just seven weeks from now, Donald Trump will be the new occupant of the Oval House. And he's already hit the ground running on how and who will execute the poll planks that got him that resounding and historic mandate. Team Trump has some expected names and ones that have actually caused quite a bit of flutter. With many young faces and some fresh faces, NDTV will give you a deep dive on who will be the key people that will play a major role in revamping U.S. foreign policy and its impact on India. In fact, as Trump uh, adds more names to his cabinet, it is becoming increasingly clear that the new U.S. administration intends to consolidate the already very strong U.S.-India ties, with many saying this could possibly be the most pro-India cabinet in the U.S. in a very long time. Several top posts in the cabinet have gone to leaders who have advocated for stronger ties between India and the US and are known China hawks. And there are at least two prominent names of Indian origin making their big splash into US politics. For India, the most crucial appointments are those on the 2 plus 2 dialogues, which is the dialogue that takes place between the foreign minister and the defense minister of the two countries. In addition to these two key appointments is the head of the National Intelligence Agency and the National Security Advisor. Since in both the US and India, these work directly with the office of the President and the Prime Minister respectively. Well, I think we have a lot of data points uh, to go by from the first Trump administration and what he did, particularly uh, on the U.S.-India relationship. Um, I think we, we clearly saw an elevation of the U.S.-India relationship during that time period, uh, both because of the importance of India, uh, because of its role in dealing with challenges from China, um, and also because there was a a certain respect and personal connection between President Trump and Prime Minister Modi. One of the most crucial and powerful positions in his cabinet, Trump chose Republican Senator Marco Rubio. Rubio will be the first Latino to hold the Secretary of State position in the US. Son of immigrants, chasing the American dream, Rubio spent a career in public service before being elected to the Senate in 2010 as part of a new generation of conservative Tea Party leaders. Rubio ran for president in 2016 and exchanged verbal jabs with Trump, calling him a con artist, while the president-elect then called him Little Marco. But since then, the two have patched up and Rubio was also in the running to be Trump's vice president. Rubio has served as a co-chairman on the Bipartisan Congressional Executive Commission on China, as well as Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Intelligence Committee. In the past decade, Rubio has staked out a position as a foreign policy hawk, taking hard lines on China, Iran, Venezuela and Cuba, and backed India. Marco Rubio is a staunch advocate for strengthening ties with India. He has long emphasized the importance of India as a strategic partner in countering China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Known for supporting the court security dialogue, Rubio's new role could boost military and economic cooperation between the two nations. As Secretary of State, Rubio has a tough task ahead of him at a time when the US is closely involved in both wars in Ukraine and Gaza. While Rubio has had a more muscular approach to foreign conflicts, Trump has been focused on avoiding military interventions abroad. Yet his stances have changed in recent years. Despite being a staunch supporter of Ukraine in the initial days of the war, Rubio has now suggested Ukraine needs to seek a negotiated settlement with Russia, even opposing a military aid package for Kiev earlier this year. Rubio's challenge will be to realign Washington's foreign policy in a changing global order. Trump's next appointee is Mike Waltz, who will serve as his national security advisor. Waltz is an army veteran with a coveted green barret and has received four bronze stars after multiple combat tours in Afghanistan and Africa. Established himself early on Capitol Hill as a key hawkish voice on matters of national security. A three-time congressman, Waltz caught the eye of the Trump White House with his national security credentials in 2016. 
Four years later, in the days after Trump authorized the drone strike that killed Major General Qasem Soleimani of Iran, Waltz was included in a small group of Republicans invited to the White House who received a briefing on the strike. Besides being among the most staunchly critical voices on China in the United States Congress, Mr. Waltz is the co-chair of the House India Caucus and has been strongly supportive of the U.S.-India strategic partnership, even calling for a formal security alliance with India. But he has highlighted the threat India faces from China, warned against the China-Pakistan axis as posing a threat to both the U.S. and India, and underlined the economic convergences between the United States and India as well. He is openly talking about the decline of America, replacing America as a global leader, the decline of Western values, replacing those with you know, what is essentially a techno-surveillance state dictatorship. Uh, and uh, you know, the first step was Tibet. The next step was Hong Kong. The next step is Taiwan. Uh, and to understand the implications, not only would they control 80% of the world's most advanced computer chips, if you look at the geography, they would control the shipping lanes into Japan, South Korea, Southeast Asia, about 50% of global GDP. So the stakes are enormous. As national security advisor, a major role that influences foreign and national security decision making, Walt's main task would be to reassess United States posture towards Ukraine, Russia, the conflict in the Middle East, China and Iran. But the congressman would step into a position that hasn't always resulted in the warmest relationships with Trump. The former president had a falling out with two of the men who previously held the role, John Bolton and retired Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster. Trump has also roped in Tulsi Gabbard, who was the first Hindu-American in U.S. Congress as the next chief of U.S. intelligence. So who is Tulsi Gabbard and how does she suddenly find herself at the top of the high-profile American intelligence community? I joined the Democratic Party over 20 years ago. I was 21 years old in Hawaii and at that time it welcomed people from all different backgrounds, different views, celebrated free speech and actually defended those whose speech was being attacked even if they disagreed with their views. It was a party that stood up for the little guy and represented our values of freedom and liberty in America. I left the Democrat Party because now it stands for the exact opposite of all of those things. Born in American Samoa, the 43-year-old Gabbard is a former Democrat Party leader with a sparkling resume. A four-time congresswoman from Hawaii and a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve, having served in Iraq. She unsuccessfully sought the party's presidential nomination in 2020. While Gabbard was quite critical of her former party in the run-up to the November 5th election, she has thrown her weight behind Donald Trump. Gabbard has been vocal about the Hindu minority in Bangladesh. In 2021, she had condemned the violence directed at Hindu worshippers by Islamist extremists in the country saying that such acts reflect a profound misunderstanding of religious values. It broke my heart to see such hate and violence being directed towards devotees of God in their temples in Bangladesh. Tulsi Gabbard made history when she became the first Hindu member of the U.S. House and took her oath of office with a hand on the Bhagavad Gita. Obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, she once also presented her personal copy of Bhagavad Gita to Prime Minister Modi. Perhaps one of the most important and defining aspects of Trump's second term will be the immigration policy and roadmap. And this explains the appointments. Three appointees stand out as the architects of this agenda. Tom Homan, Stephen Miller and Christy Noam, all known to be anti-immigration hardliners. Tom Homan, a career law enforcement officer, is no stranger to the national immigration debate. As the former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Homan is best known for his unapologetic defense of Trump's zero-tolerance border policies during his first term. Homan has long been a staunch advocate for border security. During his tenure, he expanded family detention centers, intensified workplace rates, 
and supported the construction of Trump's border wall. But his approach hasn't come without controversy. Critics accused him of ignoring the humanitarian costs of strict enforcement policies, especially regarding family separations. As border czar, Homan's task will be monumental. Securing the southern border amid record migrant crossings, tackling drug trafficking and addressing human smuggling networks. Stephen Miller is often referred to as the architect of Trump's toughest immigration policies. From the travel ban to reduced refugee admissions and attempts to end DACA, Miller's fingerprints are on nearly every major immigration initiative of Trump's first term. Miller's approach extends beyond illegal immigration. He has pushed for significant reductions in legal immigration, including H-1B visas, arguing they take jobs away from American workers. His push for a merit-based system and extreme vetting measures highlight his national security priorities. Miller's return to the White House is certain to reignite fierce debates over immigration policy, with critics accusing him of promoting xenophobia and undermining America's humanitarian commitments. Governor of South Dakota Kristi Noem is Trump's pick to lead the Department of Homeland Security. A loyal ally of Trump, Noem brings executive experience and a strong stance on immigration to the role. Noem gained national attention for her handling of COVID-19 and her conservative governance in South Dakota. She has consistently supported tougher immigration laws, including opposing pathways for asylum seekers and advocating increased security at the southern border. Her appointment signals a focus on enforcing Trump's immigration vision while tackling issues like drug trafficking and cartel violence. Trump's anti-immigration picks are already drawing sharp reactions, but one thing is clear. America's immigration policies are headed for another transformation under his leadership. Now on to the kicker, viewers. Let's speak of West Asia. A new wave of pro-Israel leadership is sweeping Washington. And it's backed by Trump 2.0. In a move to cement America's relationship with Israel, two major appointments are due to affect the already shifting sands of the West Asia conflict. First up, former Arkansas governor and uncompromising Israel supporter Mike Huckabee. He will be Trump's new ambassador to the Jewish state and is set to become the first non-Jewish ambassador to Israel since 2011. That's right, Huckabee is no stranger to Israel. For years, he has championed Israel on the global stage. Now, in a critical moment of escalating tensions, his appointment is a clear message. The U.S. stands firm with Israel, no matter what the cost. Enter Stephen Witkoff. He's a real estate tycoon, a negotiator, and a key ally in Trump administration's West Asia strategy. I mean, it's not surprising. He's known for his behind-the-scenes role in shaping the landmark Abraham Accords. Witkoff now takes on the role of the special West Asia envoy. His mission? Strengthening peace and economic ties between Israel and its Arab neighbors. But this isn't just diplomacy. This is about rewriting West Asia's future viewers. His deep ties to the region and powerful business network are now at the forefront of a new era of U.S.-West Asia relations. Together, Huckabee and Britkoff represent the Trump 2.0 approach. It's bold, it's unapologetic, pro-Israel, and fiercely committed to transforming the region. As the world watches, these two appointments promise to redefine America's role in the Middle East, standing squarely with Israel and paving the way for a new historic alliance. Trump is doubling down on Israel. West Asia will never be the same again. Many of Trump's appointments have stoked controversy, sending shockwaves across Capitol Hill. Among them are Congressman Matt Gates, who is set to be his Attorney General, and former Fox News anchor Pete Hexit as Defense Secretary and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who will run the Department of Health under the Trump administration. 
Trump's list of provocative picks are all set to test the loyalty of Senate Republicans as their confirmation processes could prove to be a challenge. However, to avoid complications, Trump is also pushing for recess appointments, meaning he would appoint cabinet members without Senate confirmation. So who is Matt Gates? Why has his nomination ruffled feathers in Washington? Matt is a Trump loyalist and best known for spearheading the effort to unseat then-Republican Speaker of House Kevin McCarthy last year. But his controversies don't end there. Matt resigned from Congress on 13 November, was also facing a House Ethics Committee probe on his alleged involvement in the sex trafficking of a 17-year-old girl, a probe that ended with his resignation from the House. The probe was also looking into allegations he engaged in sexual misconduct and illicit drug case, accepted improper gifts and sought to obstruct government investigation into his actions. The Florida lawmaker has a history of being a flamethrower in the halls of Congress. In 2018, he brought a right-wing Holocaust denier to the State of the Union and later tried to expel two fathers who lost children in a mass shooting from a hearing after they objected to a claim he made about gun control. His blustering approach has thus left Matt with many enemies, including within his own party. Another controversial pick in Trump's dream team is Pete Hexeth, former Fox News anchor who is up for the job of Defence Secretary. Hexeth is an Army National Guard veteran and Bronze Star recipient, has rallied against women in combat, voice support for troops accused and in some instances convicted of war crimes and advocated for the firing of the military's most senior officers accused of supporting so-called woke policies. Despite 20 years experience in the military, including tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, many have argued that Hexeth is woefully inexperienced to lead the world's most highly funded armies in the world with millions of servicemen and civilian and a budget over $800 billion. The former Fox anchor has already signaled his early moves at the top defense post, firing the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General C.Q. Brown. Trump's picks have riled up many within the Republican Party, accusing the president-elect of playing favoritism, picking loyalists with dubious credentials for key jobs. There are allegations that Trump has picked loyalists with dubious credentials for key jobs. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is one of those loyalists. He is set to occupy the top health post in the country. And it has come as a shock to many as he is one of the most prominent anti-vaccine activists in the US. The decision is not that surprising, considering the fact that Trump had already indicated during his presidential campaign that he would be giving RFK Jr. the high-profile job. And just last week, the anti-vaccine activist said that he would be immediately beginning studying vaccine safety and efficacy, but promised not to take them away from anybody. RFK Jr. is known for spreading conspiracy theories, such as COVID-19 targets certain races and gives others immunity. Mass shootings are linked to prescription drugs. The CIA was involved in the assassination of former President John F. Kennedy. The COVID-19 virus was genetically engineered and that vaccines can cause autism. These are some of the wildest conspiracy theories that he has tried to spread. Ever since the announcement by Trump, experts in the medical community have expressed a lot of concern over RFK Jr.'s expected appointment. It can be recalled that during the election campaign, Trump had promised to allow the anti-vaccine activist to go wild on health, signaling a major shift in the nation's approach to public health. All of that has health experts worried. They fear RFK Jr. could meddle with key government agencies and amplify vaccine hesitancy. Shifting away from those who stoke controversy, here are some of Trump's other appointees who will influence American politics over the course of the next four years. Susie Wiles, the chief of staff, the first woman at Trump's helm. Well, Susie Wiles is set to break barriers as Trump's chief of staff, the first woman to hold the role as we've covered. Publicly, she is a woman of fewer words, in case you remember, on election night in the US. In his victory speech, Trump called her the ice baby. But can Susie Wiles, who led Trump ca Trump's campaign, handle the chaos of the White House? That's yet to be seen. With Trump's complex political machine behind her, will she manage his administration's sprawling ambitions 
or will she buckle under the pressure? Well, Elise Stefanik is poised to become Trump's UN ambassador, solidifying her place as one of GOP's rising stars. But with her hard right politics and fierce loyalty to Donald Trump, will Stefanik shift US foreign diplomacy to a more isolationist, America first stance? Or can she bridge the gap between global cooperation and national self interest? In a move that is set to give the richest man in the world even more influence and power, U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has picked Tesla chief and billionaire Elon Musk and former Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy to run a new Department of Government Efficiency, a role aimed at creating a more efficient government and reduce government spending, which Musk said will send shockwaves through the system. Unlike what the name suggests, the Department of Government Efficiency will not be a government agency. It will instead work as an external agency advising the White House. While the group, which Trump said will help realize long-held Republican dreams, could come under Federal Advisory Committee Act, which dictates how external agencies operate, Musk and Ramaswamy will hold informal roles. This means they would not need confirmation from the Senate nor would they face ethical limitations. It also means Musk can continue to head Tesla and X. Musk, who spent around $200 million supporting the Trump campaign, aims to reduce government spending by at least $2 trillion. To put this in context, US government spent $6.8 trillion last year. Ramaswamy too had made reducing waste and spending a key policy platform for his campaign against Trump earlier this year. We're going to be very open and transparent and be very clear about this is what we're doing. Here are the issues. This is, this is the, the math for what, what's being spent. So we're going to make the spending lower. And if, if somebody's got a better idea for how to make the spending lower, we're, tell us. But, but if we don't, we're going to bankrupt the country. And, and so we've got to do something. And, and it's got to be a, like some pretty big moves. While the agency will be temporary with the term specified till 4th of July 2026, Trump's announcement has raised several questions about potential conflict of interest, setting a new precedent for billionaires and their influence in politics. With a fiery cabinet behind him, Trump is all set to shape America's future. The key question remains, from his aggressive immigration policy, promises to vowing to impose high trade tariffs, how much will it impact the New Delhi-Washington relationship? From the early looks of it, it will be a mixed bag. Closer cooperation on strategic goals, US to put Pakistan on the mat for its terror activities, and divergence on trade negotiations.